custom windows. It's something we need to talk about because when it comes to custom windows, this is old Windows 10. A lot of custom ISOs are based on this. Some Windows 11 stuff exists, but a lot of it is based off of this. Now, this is obviously just a stock, fresh install, nothing really going on in a fresh VM. But I wanted to revisit the topic because as I covered Atlas OS, I had a lot of people contact me. I had a lot of people say, hey, check out Revy OS, check out a ghost specter or whatever crazy name these custom ISO makers come up with. And I have criteria criteria because I want to protect the people that watch my channel, but also kind of just show you what's available as well. Uh, in, I just want to preface this whole video with, if you have to go download an ISO from a shady file site or a torrent or something like that, that has windows on it. Yeah. You're probably going to get infected and you should never do that. It's just a, uh, security risk beyond all measures uh only uh only just crazy people would would do such a thing uh, but i understand why people do it and that is because they just want something easy they want something that isn't bloated down with this giant search bar and weather and news of the day and oh i mean just ugh, disney spotify i think i even saw one with tiktok on it i think that's windows 11 I just, I, I get the purpose of that. And many people don't want to make it themselves. That's obviously my next thing I would say to custom Windows users is, well, just make it yourself like NT Lite or MSMG Toolkit, which I've done videos on. However, there's a new game in town and I covered Atlas OS's approach to it. But what I didn't realize is the original Windows AME or Millerated team created this wizard. The playbooks themselves are what these new custom Windows ISOs are using to distribute it, so to speak. Uh, how legal is this? It's pretty legal. It's pretty legit for the most part. Uh, and that's why I kind of want to just touch on this project, give it a little bit more eyes because I've already kind of done it. The AME wizard is its own separate group of uh, developers that, that made this. And then when you get into like Atlas OS, Revy OS, which people commented, hey, check out these spins. Well, they created playbooks that make windows like their distributions, which is neat. I, I covered Atlas OS and, and Revy. I, I haven't looked at, but a lot of times it strips out Defender and other aspects of windows, which is an immediate red flag and not something I would ever use. But I love the idea of it. And I love how it works. So today I want to look at the actual creators of this and look at all the claims and where it could go because this is a very new project and they spent a year developing it and uh, i could definitely see it uh, in in the future being really really good but there are con some concerns we need to we need to talk about first so first off it's an executable run and then a playbook now obviously i've already run atlas and i don't want to use revy they have their own playbooks if you scroll all the way down here they have like AME 10 and that's made by them and that's what they've done for their testing. So that's what we use today. Now it says cutting the tumor out of your OS. This is does much like Atlas OS did and just removes pretty much everything from your system. So you'll be very in insecure and security will be a major issue if you do uh, any of these playbooks. I just want to specify that. So by no means am I saying for the general audience out there, you should be doing this. But I am curious to see where it goes because I could see myself making my own playbook, so to speak, that would be good. However, uh, a couple claims here I, I just want to touch on first is one, they have a verified, unverified system. To be verified right now, you have to go through their Patreon, which is about $10 a month and you get uh, playbook verification and I, can, I, I kind of am okay with that. So you have to pay money per month to have a verified playbook. I was like, that's kind of a interesting way of doing it. But again, this entity is not really known and how comfortable are we giving them our money? And that's something I'm like, okay. And then I was like, well, it's open source. Let's take a look at the actual code itself, the actual wizard itself, because it is says, says right here, it's open source down right here. So I was like, okay, freely available source code strengthens. I pull this up and I look at it and well, this is the core of the wizard, but it's not really the wizard. 
So it's not truly open source, it's partially open source. There's also no documentation on how to use these playbooks. There's also no documentation on how to create the playbooks. So that's kind of where I'm at on this. The documentation for both playbooks and this open source is awful. Uh, some of the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> None of this really does work uh, out of the gate unless you know, let me know in the comments, but uh, I still haven't got any official word on how to actually use this uh, CLI usage. Because if you build this package, which I've actually been doing a lot with C Sharp over on Twitch, check me out over there if you want to catch a live show. But uh, it's just a executable that's meant to run in like terminal or, or command line interface. So there is no source code for the actual wizard. And I'm actually okay with that, but I think they should be a little bit more forward saying it's partially open source because it's not, the whole project's not completely open source. So that can be a concern because there's certain aspects of this we can't see. And eventually I think I did look through like the CLI program here and it looks good. And I just hadn't figured out a way to like bake it all in and do it myself. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't have any GUI interface, which, hey, that's that's just where we're at with this. But today, let's run it in the background just to see what it is as we kind of discuss this, because I do think there is a spot, especially in the custom Windows realm. I do like this method better than a lot of other methods of like downloading a playbook from some shady site. Let's see what it is and just kind of show you how these playbooks are deployed. Basically, it just wants you to come in here, disable all of your security because it will be modifying the system heavily. And that means it could install anything at once. Also uninstall anything at once. So that's what this is doing right here. It's disabling your entire security. So definitely do not run on a daily driving or any kind of uh, major system that you might have any sensitive information on. So let's go next. Now that you've uh, seen that, it does require an activation uh, to run. It says, hey, please activate before running because a lot of these playbooks will strip out like slui.exe where that's what you use to activate your windows. Now, some of them don't, and you can run this after the fact as it was with Atlas OS. I know on the AME playbook though, that that file gets deleted. So there we go. Let's just try and run actions and see if uh, we can get this prepared. So this is my test account, obviously. And we're going to see how stripped down it does uh, get our Windows system. Now, obviously, we've already disabled security. We're going to just relaunch that. Let's look at our task manager here from the stock. You can see we're at 100-something processes. Uh, this is the stock memory usage. So let's, let's run our playbook and see what we get. Now this is gonna require an activation, so I'm gonna burn a key just so you can see this. Okay, we've activated our version right here. Let's go back and uh, see if it detects it now. Everything's good, let's hit next. See it's an MIT license on Wizard Core. That's the actual open source CLI tool that's run. And then obviously the GUI here uh which is not open source so we'll hit next and agree to those agreements right now there's no customizability to this but i think they're going to add it in the future we'll make it something super secure so it has a whole bunch of different yaml files i noticed apex is your microsoft uh packages that come baked into the system this will remove the microsoft store xbox uh anything downloaded from the microsoft store will also be removed configures all of the services. So it disables a huge amount of services in services.msc, removes Defender, Edge, uh, and like malicious removal tool, otherwise known as mrt.exe, OneDrive, uh, all Office or baked in Office, Update Health, a whole bunch of other settings that come baked in uh, on the Windows 10 and also on Windows 11 using that playbook. It also has a custom SFC migration. So it, they created their own SFC or system file checker tool. So a huge, huge amount of work has gone into this project. That's why I don't want to just crap on it. I really just kind of wanted to show people it and have more people review it, not use it necessarily, but review it uh, because I'm really 
want to see where this goes. It does take some liberties with some things it's installing here, Firefox, Thunderbird, and some other programs that I don't personally use. I know some people probably do, but uh, I usually would probably modify this playbook to remove all those extra installs. It does install like VC runtimes and DirectX 9 for legacy games, and then also installs some custom fonts and sets file association so it's not going to try and open stuff up in like Edge that doesn't exist. I did also look through this script. It does install Chocolatey and Scoop, which are CLI application installers. And that's it. Everything is pretty hands off. Let's see how the auto reboot goes. And this might be familiar if you've ever installed a Miller rated from uh, several years back. Uh, that's kind of like their, their default wallpaper. Not a big fan of it, but we could obviously personalize and change that. We'll just grab something a little bit uh, more stock. All right, so this is the entire thing. It does install uh, Open Shell, I think is what this was. This was actually called Classic Shell back at Windows 8 era, and then kind of puts in a couple extra things here. I personally prefer the stock uh, start menu, and obviously I don't like uh, a lot of these programs. Uh, maybe VLC I would keep, but almost everything else I wouldn't. They do have UAC enabled by default, which is good. So it's a bit better than Atlas OS's stock settings, in my opinion. Uh, and then like the rest of everything, I'm like, okay, it gives you the basics. And if we look at our task process or task manager here, uh, you can see processes are not that impressive, sitting at about 104. However, memory usage is a really good spot, 1.3. Um, so overall, not too bad but we don't have an antivirus we don't have a lot of things i probably would add that and if we look at the settings menu it uh works but you will see that it's very limited in what you see here as it's stripped out a lot of the stuff using old metro design but overall i find this to be very fast very functional uh just not very secure so that's the big thing with it i would say I am kind of interested and I think I will trust this uh, project a little more once I see more people use it. Also, one big thing here I would like to see, if I see more custom ISOs adopt uh, this and you see them kind of pile on and the donations on Patreon, if this gets up there and they're getting a lot of money per month where this is maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars a month, that's going to be a very big incentive for them to keep their good rep reputation and it's going to increase the reputation to a spot to where a lot of people could trust this because if, if they had anything that had malware in it and was distributed as a verified playbook, well, that could ruin their reputation, which would mean they wouldn't make any money. However, right now, they're only making about $25 a month, uh, so uh, that's not quite there yet. And that's where... I kind of stand on this really need to tinker around in a virtual machine. I wouldn't necessarily use this. I want more documentation. I understand that some of the project isn't open source, like the actual GUI wizard, uh, mainly because I think that will be their way to monetize this project. And uh, contrary to, you know, many people out there saying everything should be open source. Uh, you know, this is something where I'm okay with them keeping the wizard closed source. I think it should be notated that it's closed source. And the monetization behind this project should be a little bit more open. You know, maybe do that and then have better documentation so people can just make playbooks. And it says right here, and I actually talked with the developer and he said that he does want to make playbooks available and document it better to where you could create your own playbook and then make your own windows to however you want it. And I like that. I always am a big fan of you doing the work and being able to make windows however you want it to be, which I think is the future of using windows. If you're stuck on windows, it's nice to be able to use it how you want it. And uh, I see this as a new tool that's just very young. It's still growing. It still needs a lot more documentation. I would love to be able to use the CLI with a personal playbook. And then if I was going to distribute it to people, I think you should donate the $10 a month so you could distribute it to everyone and have it verified and you pay for that privilege. Maybe you even charge for your playbook. I don't know. 
But I would say that I really like this method of uh, de-bloating windows in the future when it becomes more reputable. And I have a big shout out to the actual project maker here because it's a neat project. One that I don't necessarily trust. Not that I would recommend it for a daily driver again. I got to keep reiterating that. I don't trust custom ISOs, but I like where it's headed. And I, I think the future is very bright for it. It's just, let's watch it. I want to see when that documentation comes available for both the playbook and just using a CLI thing that I build myself, not necessarily their GUI one that I showed in this video. I would much rather just, you know, for those technical people, be able to do it all myself. And I would love that. So this is kind of a really neat project and they spent a lot of time and it's a labor of love I can see from the AME team. And I wanted to have more people get involved with it look at it because um, it's something that could be a game changer for a lot of the minimalists out there that know what they're doing. Um, and then maybe we get to see some playbooks that don't just rip out all of Windows security. Uh, that would be a lot better. I would say the AME playbook is a step above Atlas's playbook. There's just some liberties it took that I don't necessarily agree with. And obviously not having Defender or any antivirus a huge problem for your average Windows user. So that is Windows AME Wizard and custom Windows that I see kind of as a future, but uh, we're not there yet. So stay tuned. I'm going to be keeping my eye on this project. I just got to want to inform everybody what all's going on with it because it's really neat. I don't trust it. I don't recommend it. But dang, it has such promise. And for those users that always want the absolute minimum experience, it's not bad, especially if you know what you're doing.